Hey there, it's Gogri with My Custom Controller, and today I wanted to talk to you about how to use our DigiCamo paint mask to actually make a DigiCamo controller. Now, they're awesome and they look great, but one of the tricks to a DigiCamo is a lot like this Alabama controller that we made here. There's a pattern to it, and it's really hard to make a pattern look right on a controller. So, it actually takes a lot more time and effort to do something like this because we can't just lay down a bunch, like one big paint mask at once. This is all individually done. So I'm going to put this off to the side here and grab this uh, DigiCamo. The first thing that you're going to want to do when you get it, what I like to do is I like to strip off the entire outside of it. Now this has a pro and a con. We have lots of these in the shop, so when we make DigiCamo, we have lots of extras. But if you're using this at home and you just bought one paint mask, you can actually use all the little insides right here as extra digital camo pieces. So I wouldn't necessarily strip the whole thing off. That's just a little note. But I like to do that here because I can then see the pieces I'm working with. If you keep those inside pieces, you should have plenty of uh, digi camo to make at least four colors on this, uh, on this controller. Now I'm not going to actually paint it in this video because this is part one. But I'm going to show you the concept and the theory on how to use the paint mask. So when we look at the controller faceplate, we can see that it's rounded and that we have a bunch of different angles that we're going to have to deal with. But what I like to do, and I think looks best when I build a digital camo controller, is try and visualize a straight line all the way across. I find that DigiCamo looks cool no matter how you, how you wrap it around, but if you can keep every line on that um, uh, latitude, you know, the lengthwise of the, or the widthwise of the controller, if you can keep those symmetrical, and actually in alignment, it actually turns out to be much better. So what I like to do is start off with my first color that I'm going to use um, as my base coat. So if I was going to make a blue DigiCamo controller, I would use a light blue to start, and then I would use a medium blue, and maybe one more medium blue, and then a black. Or a medium blue, medium blue, and then a navy blue. So you just want to bring your shades up. So you want to start with the lightest shade and increase as you go. So I would also then begin, I, we're going to pretend for right now that I've base coated this in white. I'm going to do a white, gray, and black DigiCamo. So this thing is all base coated in white. I'm going to pull off my first piece of DigiCamo here. Let me grab this. All right. And all the squares are symmetrically made, meaning they're all the same size. So I'm going to line this up right here, and I'm going to try and find a perfectly straight line going across. So the line I'm using is this one. I'm trying to keep that straight. Then I'm going to take another piece, for instance, something like this one right here, because it's a nice long one with a good line on it. And you don't have to do this. I just think they look better if you do. Now, this is the hard part. You want to look at it. You want to visualize it. You want to say, OK, where is my straight line going to be? And I'm going to cover right about there all the way around. Now the way to think about a DigiCamo controller when you're making it is that every color that you are covering, so right now we're covering white with this paint mask, is going to stay that color. That's very important. Um, then I'll come up here and I'll just, I'm just grabbing another one that looks good. And I'm going to say up here at the top, trying to keep it symmetrical again. I'm going to try and keep that straight line going across. There we go, keep my line, make sure that's set around that edge, and you just keep going. All right, so you put that one down. I would fill it in. It depends on how many colors you're using. If you're only using three colors, you're definitely going to want to put more on the first coat. Um, I always try to be careful not to put too many first coat colors on, so I'll cover up a button or such something like that so it's kind of cool you can put the shells together and wrap it continue the wrap that's easy enough um, here we go let's put a couple more on here and so we have this paint mask and we purposefully purchase this super flexible paint mask because we know that's what works the best take my scissors and I have this big chunk right here left over I'm gonna cut it there we go and I'm gonna take the rest of it over to the other side and I'm going to flip it around and just kind of make a continuation of it. I want to make sure that my lines are at least um, parallel to each other and I'm talking about my horizontal lines. I want those to match up. 
And already we can see we have a pretty cool looking scheme here. I would probably add some little small piece right to this part up here because I, I like to have lots of each color in every step. And there we go. So this would be my first coat. So I'd have white on here, I'd put this on top of it, and now next what I would do is I would have some gray paint and I would spray the whole thing gray. And we're gonna do this in our next video. We're actually gonna build one, but I wanted you to see the concept. Once you spray the gray on, the theory behind how you can use this is actually kind of simple but cool. We have already a digital camo outline going on here, and I usually use those things for my final color. So my goal is to cover the entire controller with paint mask by the time I get done, except for little spots, little holes that will make the final color come out. So if I had painted this all gray, I would then grab my next set. And another unique characteristic of digital camo is you wanna have all the different colors in all the different areas. So for instance, right here, we have this little break. Um, there's a little step. What I like to do is line up my step with the edge. Let me see if I can put that on there so you can see that. So right here, I've lined up a corner to a corner. And what that does, is it actually helps us create more of that digital camo effect, but it's not, not straight going length or uh, across the controller. So what I'm gonna do is just make that right there, try and bend it a little bit. I need some tweezers. Pull this up, bring it down. That would be for my gray. Now everything I'm putting on right now would be the gray color of the controller. So what I've done is I've put a gray splotch in here, but I've left what looks like the same width for the next color to fill in, and then we can cover those things as we go. So we'll do that on our next tutorial. We'll show you actually how to paint this controller step by step, but I wanted to show you the basic theory on how we like to line up this paint mask so that you can do it at home when you're working on it yourself. And uh, that's it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thanks for visiting my custom controller. Skogri out.